You know what's crazy? No other ethnicity of women support their men like Asians. Whenever I've gone to something Asian-owned, corner store, restaurant, whatever, you always see the wife there working alongside the husband. You never see or hear, oh, you need to provide for me. You need to make 100% of the money. You need to provide me a lifestyle where I can be a stay-at-home mom. After dating across Asia for the last 10 years, I'm gonna be sharing with you my insider methods and tips. You definitely don't want to miss out on what's coming up. We will dive into exclusive advice, listen to what the community is saying, and we're gonna introduce a new member of the team. Hi, I'm Rose. Who will be joining us to share some vital hacks that are guaranteed to transform your dating and social life. But that's not all. For those gentlemen who stick around to the end, I'll also be revealing my number Number one method that you need to use. So I recently stumbled upon this Reddit post and the OP goes on to say that he is from America and wants to know about the dating scene in the Philippines. The Philippines and other Asian nations have a common cultural trait that affects single Americans and also Western men who plan to date and live in Southeast Asia. This is called saving face. Saving face in this context refers to the tendency to avoid direct or confrontational communication. So if you're anything like me, you want direct, open and clear communication. Maybe it's because of our culture, but we tend to prefer transparency. However, in Asia, this is not always the case. And as you can imagine, this can lead to confusion when dating or in a relationship. You may end up dating a Filipina to find out that she is not happy with a situation, but you don't know what the situation is due to the indirect communication. But to be honest, it's a pain in the ass to communicate with someone who doesn't open up. So if you can get someone to open up, then good on you. Here is a quick clip from Rebeauty that illustrates this point perfectly. Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. Okay. Are you sure you're okay? I said yes, I'm okay. This is not heavy, so I am okay. One common question I hear is what do Asian women find attractive and do looks actually matter? There is a belief with some foreigners in Asia that you don't really need to make much of an effort. I've even met expats who have basically said to me that their looks don't matter because they are white and they have money. If you are just looking for any girl, it's true, being white and having money will take you far. But if you're looking for a committed relationship, a long-term committed relationship, effort is needed and it's total BS to say that looks don't matter in Asia. Asian cultures judge more on looks than any other culture I've ever experienced. I'm not saying that you need to be an Italian stallion or anything, but taking care of your hygiene, not wearing flip-flops or tank tops everywhere you go is a good place to start. But Jamie, it's so hot in Asia. I sweat all the time. Yes, I totally know where you're coming from and that's why wearing darker colours and buying breathable fabric like 100% cotton can really help. So you need to make sure that the fabric uh, is going to be lightweight and breathable. Uh, linen, wool, cotton, uh, anytime you see those on a shirt, on, on trousers, on a jacket, that's a good thing. And then when you feel it, it should be lightweight. And if you hold it up to light, if you can see through it a bit, that's a good thing. Signs. When it comes to dating and finding the perfect Filipina, Thai, or any other partner, it's important to remember one thing. Whatever the situation or outcome, live your life. Instead of waiting around, go out and have a great time, regardless of whether you have a date or not. It's a hard truth, but finding that one person won't make everything alright. It's the wrong way to look at it. The best way to date in Asia is to build a life for yourself. By doing so, you'll naturally attract the right person into your life. Yeah, I totally agree. One point that I would add to this is that sooner or later, you will meet people who are flaky. Some people only want to chat for validation. Some even send messages a few hours before you're going to meet them to say that they are busy or that some kind of family 
emergency has sprang up. When this happens, dating can feel exhausting. This is why it's a great idea to still go out to an event even if the date cancels on you. Rose, can you give me some advice about dating profiles, in particular dating photos, as this is an area that's often overlooked? No problem. One thing for sure is that there is a lot of men on dating apps. It can be quite strange to go through hundreds of profiles, all of which have the same serious expression in a selfie format. Having a nice bright background and a simple smile can do the world of good. Yeah, that's right. I had a friend of mine who had a bit of a dating addiction, to be honest with you, but he started experimenting with conversations, photos, and profile changes. He found that a nice simple smile works well. The same guy used a very sneaky trick in his profile, and he would incorporate AI. So Basically, he would take the AI software and he would put himself in a suit, he would change his background, and he could pretty much recreate the photo into anything he wanted. And as you've probably already guessed, it did result in more matches and more messages. I'm not suggesting this as it's a little bit misleading, but it goes to show the importance of a good photo. Take a look at this clip of six photos. Now, let's take a look at his profile after we made some changes. So this is a lot better. His first picture is, again, just a nine day difference. Is this a perfect 10 out of 10? No, but I would put this picture at a six, 6.5 out of 10, you know, compared to what he was doing earlier. One of the biggest pieces of advice I would give to a single man dating in Asia is to be direct from the start. This is very powerful, but it will lead to short-term loss. Let me explain. Many ladies in Southeast Asia have been brought up to believe that the ultimate goal is to have a family and live Live happily ever after. If this is not what you're looking for, be honest and direct. It will save you both a lot of time and emotional energy. Yes, it may mean that you go on your own way, but it's much better in the long run. The reality is there are many single ladies who do not want to start a family, so there are women out there who share your vision if this sounds like you. You must remember that you are incredible. I've come across a lot of stories about Western women in in the UK, US, etc., treating men terribly. And so the men lose their confidence and what normally happens is that the man's self-esteem drops and he starts to get desperate, he chases dopamine, he forgets how incredible he is and ultimately settles down with anyone, even if she doesn't share a similar vision. Yes, it's interesting you mentioned self-esteem as it is often overlooked. Let's say you're talking to a woman on a dating app. She might be busy, but the hard truth is that for most people, they are never too busy to reply. It doesn't matter if you are a gentleman or a perfect man. Some people just won't be at the right place to date or commit. It's not always a reflection on you, but sometimes we turn this into low self-esteem and start to question ourselves. If you have ever used dating apps in the Philippines, you will likely experience a flood of romance scams and adult workers. Unfortunately, most apps don't give a crap because it brings more paying members to the site. But let me tell you a secret. I have a secret dating app that aims to solve this problem. I will be sharing this information only to my viewers very, very soon. But nevertheless, you will sooner or later encounter adult workers or scammers. And the difficulty is you might not know that they are adult workers or scammers. When I was staying in Bangkok, I matched with a lovely Filipina who was staying here for a few weeks on vacation. We had dinner and one thing led to another and we found ourselves back at my place. Before getting to it, she demanded money for the deed. I was shocked to find out that even though she was on vacation here, she was, in quotations, working here. I didn't have any cash on me, and even if I did, I wouldn't give it to her, but nevertheless, she started to get really annoyed. Nothing was mentioned on her profile, and she didn't bring this up at any point throughout the date. She got louder and louder and refused to leave, and I started to panic, wondering how on earth did I get into this situation. So I had to improvise, and in my flustered state, I gave her a packet of chopsticks as a gift. Of course, she was like, what on earth? So I got a big cardboard box, 
put in the chopsticks and a few food items and a food blender that I had under the sink and then she calmed down. He said, Rico, you ever notice that, um, look like everybody on Tinder selling pussy now. And I said, you know what? I was thinking that the other day that, um, sugar babies is taking over Tinder like, like 90 going west, man. T like sugar babies and prostitutes, they all over Tinder. Moral of the story, you never really know who you're talking to. The gold diggers, the adult workers, and the scammers use these apps and websites a lot, but they only make up a percentage of members. So speaking first and taking your time is a lesson that I learned after that experience. If you plan to date in Asia, it's likely that you know how important family is. This is not an easy subject because the topic differs from culture to culture to family to family, but you will find that in most cases, family pride and respect counts for a lot. I would advise to be open, but do not be transparent. Always downplay what you have and what you can do. From speaking to thousands of expats over the years, it's clear to see that the family dynamic is not fair or equal. If you give her family 100k, it doesn't mean that they will do the same for you. Most families are decent, but when family members see that money is within their grasp, their true colours shine through. The last method that has helped me out tremendously with dating in Asia is the listen, respect and decision method. So what is this method and why is it needed? Over the years, wokeness and being woke has exploded. Typically, this is in countries such as the UK, America, Australia, etc. But wokeness has been moving across Asia, and it has been now for many years. When we talk about being woke, I don't mean the basic stuff of treating everybody fairly or respectfully, as I think everybody could do with being a bit more nicer to each other. I mean the extremes, which encourages unfairness and toxicity in relationships, and this typically affects men and at men's expense. Let's take the example of banter. It's something that we tend to do in the UK. It's a playful exchange of remarks, often to tease in a good humorous manner. But with the woke warriors, you have to be really careful with this. Some say this is due to culture, but it's nothing to do with culture differences. As Asian people, they understand banter clearly, and most cultures have their own version of this. So always listen, respect people's viewpoints, and decide your plan of action. Here is a question. Have you ever come across the term yellow fever? In this video, I explore this topic and explain the surprising reasons why men are really dating Asian women. And to give a clue, it's nothing to do with a fetish. I will see you on the other side.